walking up and down in front of me. That's pretty cool. That's new. Anyway, big welcome to visitors. I see we've got a lot of visitors and friends in the house this morning. Yeah, give it up. Woo! We'd love for you guys to hang around after the service, have a coffee, get to know a few people. So um, we've got some ushers here in the aisles just as they're making their way down. Give them a little wave if you'd like a free coffee and a little bit of uh, information about what we do here at Tauranga Elam Church. Brilliant hands. Anyone want a free coffee this morning? There's a few more. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It works, man. It works. Chocolate and coffee. Welcome everybody that's still flooding in through the doors. Welcome online. Okay, we love to celebrate in the house and we're going to celebrate birthdays right now. If you've had a birthday in the last week and you like a free chocolate bar, hi Clendon, welcome. <laughs> Anyone, anyone had a birthday in the last week? Hands up, we're gonna throw you a chocolate bar. Woo! Hands going up, down the back, over here.
anyone still coming in? If it's your birthday this week, keep your hand up. We'll throw you a chocolate bar. Yeah, look at that. Got one at the door. Just uh, if you've got some seats next to you and a bit of space, just make sure you let the ushers know so they can fit everybody in. That'd be awesome. Okay, what about wedding anniversaries? Anyone celebrating a wedding anniversary? <laughs> no? Too close to Christmas? Is, is it? No? All right then. No wedding anniversaries? Oh, well, congratulations on being married, everybody else that's married anyway. You'll get a chocolate bar if you're here on your anniversary. That's fantastic. All right, I've got a, uh, hopefully got a little photo up. I just want to congratulate. Look at that. Woo! Congratulations, Priya. I'm not sure if you're in the house this morning, but what a little cutie. Kenrick Silas. What a great name, eh? Look at that. Our newest member. Fantastic. Yeah. Woo! Well done, Mum and Dad. Okay. I've got one message, uh, one notice for you. We've got no video notices this morning. I've just got one important announcement to make is that um, Pastor Mike Griffiths is coming to speak here on the 22nd of November. Now, if you, you'll know Mike, if you've done growth track with me, it is week two, it's the week that I run. He's the amazing guy that's teaching us what we call the meat in the sandwich. He's a great teacher, great communicator from Auckland, Elam. He's coming down 22nd of November. Get in early, reserve your spot because the house will be full, I'm sure. So keep an eye out for that. Okay, we're gonna release our children now to their programs. How are you kids? Stand up. You're good, you're good. Yeah. Look at all these kids, eh? We're gonna pray and you guys are gonna head off to your program this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these children. We thank you for the call on their lives. Father God, we thank you that each and every one of them has been created by you for a purpose. Father God, we thank you for the leaders that are guiding them, instructing them this morning. Father, go with them. Lord, I just pray and I know that their time together is going to be awesome and your Holy Spirit is with them already in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay. I'd like to introduce Pastor Trevor. Oh, he's Stay, right yes, just stay here a minute. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. <clears throat> Bless you, children. Hey, guys, I just want to, um, I want Nathan just to release something. He was speaking to me through the week and, and uh, God was speaking to him about, specifically about women. And I just really feel that, I want him just to briefly just share what he feels, the word that he got. Because I really feel that there's women here today that God really wants to touch you, that you're special. And uh, so I'm really putting them on the spot, okay? He wasn't expecting this. So that's cool. That's good. I like to do this at times. You know? All right. I was in Auckland on the weekend. That's good. And um, yeah, believe it or not, God still talks to you when you're in Auckland. <laughs> and um, I was uh, looking at Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11, 35. And I felt that God said to me, it's, a, it's, the, uh, it's the chapter of faith. And Paul is, is writing this list of champions of faith. And right at, at verse 35, he adds a little bit. And he said, he was listing the, the heroes of faith and he said, woman, receive back their dead, raised to life again. And I felt right then in my heart, in my spirit, that God had a message for mothers in the house. Very good. That some of you have been carrying, not in the physical, but in the emotional, in the, in the maternal connection with your children. You've been carrying something that for years you've thought has died. Whether it's your relationship with your children, whether it's your hope of their salvation, whether it is the the sense of healing required in your family. I really felt that God was saying that through your faith, He is going to bring the dead things back to life. 
And I really felt that this was for the women of the house this morning. So be encouraged that God has got you. He has seen your faith. He has seen your prayers. And those things that you thought were dead, He is going to bring back to life. Amen? Thank you, bro. So come on, moms, claim that in the name of Jesus. Hey, look, we're going to, it's, it's a special service today. It's great to have everyone here, but we've got, I think it's 11 people who are being water baptized, who are declaring their faith in Jesus Christ publicly, which is going to be awesome. But what we're going to do is, guys, we're going to do this in a time of worship. Now, what you now need to realize is women are very good at multitasking, Yeah. But what you need to know, the greatest multitasker of all is the Holy Spirit. So what we want to do is, even that word that Nathan brought, as as a mother, you need to claim that, claim it. But there's some people here as well, and maybe you've been through stuff, or maybe maybe there's an illness, a sickness in your body, whatever it is. This morning, what we want to do, as we worship God, we're going to do water baptisms, but we want some people, you people who need prayer, we want you to come up the front. If you feel you need prayer for something, come up the front, come over this side, and some of our guys will come and pray for you. Okay, so what I'm saying is this as well, guys, is leadership in the church. If you're in leadership or you've been involved in leadership, I want you to feel free to come and pray for people, okay? Now, let let me be up with this too, guys. We're not there to counsel. We don't need to ask a million and one questions. Just one thing, what do you need prayed for? Pray for it and let the Spirit of God move, amen? So as we worship God, as people get water baptized, as we pray, let the Holy Spirit move, amen? Is that cool? And with that, welcome everybody who's here for the first time, as Nathan said. It's great to have you in church. We're not weird. We're not wonky anything else. We just love Jesus. And we want the Holy Spirit to be able to move. So if you're thinking, oh, what's that prayer thing about? You can trust us, all right? You can trust us. We, 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 the grace of God's on, on, on our lives. That's what it is, amen? So with that, guys, hey, come on, let's stand together. Oh, no, no. Let's watch a video. Sorry, guys, we got a video. So there, my name's Greg. Um, we're from Caddy Caddy. Um, before we came to church, I was cleaning an oven for a lady called Donna Williams. And I happened to stand up to go outside and get something, and she looked at me, and she said, do you believe in God? And I said, yes, I do. She said, oh, do you go to church? And I said, well, no, I don't, because I felt like I was being a bit of a hypocrite if I go to work, I go to church and sort of live the life I was living. And, but things changed, and I talked to my wife and said, look, we've been invited for dinner tonight. Uh, we don't know these people, but we'll go, will we? And my wife said, yes, we'll go together. And then, as you know, they invited us to church. And we said, well, where's that? And they said, it's in Tauron, it's Elam Church. So we came along and we thoroughly enjoyed ourselves and that we kept coming every week after that. And then we got told about the uh, growth track. And we thought, hey, let's, let's try this out and see what the growth track's about. So we went to that, we did the four week course. We really enjoyed it. And we've been coming ever since. We try and come every week because we really enjoy the fellowship from all the people and hearing the word of God. And not long after actually starting church, we actually got up and gave our hearts to the Lord. So now I'll hand you over to my better half. And Hi, I'm Janine. I'm Greg's wife and better half. <laughs> we gave Sometimes. ourselves to Jesus, um, the Lord, at the beginning of February. Um, Millie did an altar call and Greg and I looked at each other and decided to go and give our hearts. And Millie and her husband prayed over us and it was the feeling was amazing and ever since we have been coming to church in march not long after giving our hearts to jesus i had a stroke and i had the good fortune of meeting the lord and he said it was not my time yet and sent me back so i'm grateful that we gave our hearts to the lord in uh, february and forever grateful to the fellowship of the church here but now we feel it's time to give ourselves fully to the lord by water baptism Um, growth track really helped us with this decision and so that's what we have chosen to do hi my name is francisco duplessis 
I'm from South Africa, been in New Zealand for about 18 months. Uh, 2016, it's a big year for me, I was diagnosed with heart condition. Uh, heard about a men's camp as I was in hospital. Uh, as I came out of hospital, I went on a men's camp, it's a prayer camp, and gave my life to Jesus. But I feel it's it's time now, It's I'm in a good place, and time to live my life with Jesus, time to get water baptized and give it all to Him. Hi everyone, my name is Sharon and I want to get water baptized to publicly declare that I have given my life to the Lord Jesus. Earlier this year, I went on a search for the truth. I went down many avenues and all of these ultimately led me to the Bible and to Jesus Christ. Jesus is the truth. He is the life and he is my savior. I believe that Jesus gave his life for me on the cross to save me from my sins. I want to live my life for Jesus and put my trust and faith in him. Since I have given my life to Jesus, he has given me a sense of peace. I'm excited about my journey with Christ and I'm ready for many challenges that will no doubt happen as well as bless blessings, growth, and success. No matter what happens, Jesus will be with me, showing me the way and giving me guidance. Because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4, 13. Hi, my name is Bianca, I'm 23 years old. Um, I used to come to this church when I was young and then in my teenage years I strayed away from God and um, halfway through this year I decided to recommit my life and I've decided to get water baptised. My name is Benika, I'm seven years old, I'm born from South Africa, I gave my heart in Covert and my and he is my favorite dad. And I love God because I'm a child of God. And I love him so much. I am Virginie and I'm nine years old. And I live in South Africa. And I want to get baptized because I love Jesus. He's in my heart. And he keeps my heart clean and safe. I love him very much in my heart. Yes, bye. My name is Kate Tussie. I'm nine years old. I'm half called Colin and half someone. The reason why I want to get baptized is because I've already given my heart to the Lord and I want to start a new journey of faith with God. Hi, my name is Daniel. Okay, and, and I'm 18 and I guess I want to get baptized. Last week when I went to curate, I felt like, like I wanted to. Stop living my loudest sea and lifestyle that I've been living for too, too long and I won't get deeper into it, a relationship with Jesus. Hi, my name is Jerry. I am 15 years old. And the reason why I want to get baptized is because I publicly declare my faith and start a new chapter with God. Yew! Hello, everyone. My name is Sonia Colletto. I've known God all my life, but in the last year, I've grown stronger in my faith. And it feels right to get water baptized today. Oh, that was good, eh? Wasn't it? Can we give another clap for those people today? That's awesome. Okay, everyone stand up for worship, please.
starts to break declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus your name is power your name is power your name is healing your name is love break care
from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Let's declare this this morning. Shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name. Jesus. Shout Jesus.
to that stone was moved for good for the lamb had conquered death come on sing it out and the dead rose from their tombs and the angels stood in love for the souls of all who come to the father of restored in the church of christ was born and the spirit lit the flame now this gospel truth of all
this tank today have been forgiven through what Jesus did on the cross. Lord, we pray for from the youngest to the oldest that they would be in fire for you. Lord, we thank you that they have been courageous in making a public declaration of Jesus being their Savior and their Lord. Father, we pray that they would be mighty men and women of God. Father, we pray that heaven would be open and Lord, that they would know who they are as your sons, as your daughters, Lord. That their identity would be in Jesus and Lord, that they would be encouraged each and every day. Lord, to spend time with you, to worship you, to love on you and to share the good news of the gospel with those who they're around. Lord, we praise you and we bless you for them. Thank you, Jesus, for your grace, your mercy, your love, your kindness, your faithfulness, your forgiveness. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done on the cross, that through your death and resurrection, as we repented and put our faith in you, Lord, you forgive our sins and you've given us eternal life, Lord. That, Father, we've got so much to celebrate because your days for us are good, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. And, Lord, we praise you and bless you. And everyone who loved the Lord said, Amen. Give somebody a high five before you sit down. Please. Wow. Thank you, team. Great stuff, worship team. That was so good. That was so good by the worship team, wasn't it? Did you enjoy that this morning, eh? Was that so cool? Eh? Come on, let's give a clap. Come on. Wow. Wow. So good to see so many people here. Some of your family and friends who came to support, fantastic. But I just think it's great when you see people making that public declaration eh, that, that they want to go for Jesus. And you know, even, even the little ones, you know, you can think at times, do they really know what they're doing? But you know, their parents know them well. They've talked to them, took them through, so, and they feel that they're the place. So we just got to leave it with God, amen? And uh, I just think it's fantastic. Fantastic. And I think too that I look at Francisco, he's come all the way from South Africa just to get water baptized in New Zealand. And uh, I, I, think it's, I think it's amazing, isn't it? And, it and, and Sonia, the Italian, wow, how cool is that? Wow, so good. Hey guys, just a couple of jokes. I haven't told jokes for a bit. Just going to keep it a bit lighthearted. This is called The Current Bank Crisis Explained by an Irish Man. Young Paddy bought a donkey from a former for $100. The former agreed to deliver the donkey the next day. The next day, he drove up and said, Sorry, Paddy, but I have some bad news. The donkey has died. So Paddy said, Well, then just give me back my money. The former said, Can't do that. I've already spent it. So Paddy said, Okay, then bring me the dead donkey. The former asked, What are you going to do with it? And uh, Paddy says, I'm going to raffle him off. The former said, you can't raffle off a dead donkey. Paddy said, sure I can. Watch me. I just won't tell anybody he's dead. So a month later, the former met up with Paddy and asked, hey, what happened to the dead donkey? Paddy said, I raffled them off for 100, or sorry, I raffled them off. I sold 500 tickets at $2 each and made a profit of $898. The former said, didn't anyone complain? Paddy said, yeah, the guy who won complained, but I just gave him back his two bucks. Paddy, Paddy, Paddy now works for the Bank of Ireland. <laughs> An elderly Italian man was living alone in New Jersey. He wanted to plant his annual tomato garden, but it was very difficult work since his, the ground was very hard and his only son, Vincent, had been put in prison. The old man wrote a letter to his son and described his predicament. Dear Vincent, I am feeling pretty sad because it looks like I won't be able to plant my tomato garden this year. I'm just getting too old and the digging up the garden and plot is too hard. I know if you were here, son, my troubles would be over. I know you would be happy to dig the plot for me like the old days. Love, Papa. A few days later, he receives a letter from Vincent. Dear Pop, don't dig up the garden. That's where all the bodies are buried. Love you, Vincent. 4 a.m. the next morning, the FBI, FBI arrived in the local police. They dig up the entire area without finding any bodies. They apologized to the old man and left. That same day, and the old man received another letter from his son. Dear Pop, go ahead and plant the tomatoes now. That's the best I can do for you. <laughs> oh, dear, dear. <laughs> so good, eh? So good. Oh, okay, okay. I'm forgetting where I'm at now. I'm flustered. Isn't it good to laugh? Aye, 
it's good to laugh. Let me see. I'm, I'm after something. I'm after something here that I wanted to read, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to find it. So, okay, let me see. Just give me one more go. Technology, eh? It's good when you know how to use the property. <laughs> ah. Hey, what I wanted to say was this. Um, do you remember Billy? I think we've got a photograph. Have we got a full photograph of Billy and Lanny? Remember Billy and Lanny? They came here from South Africa, but they actually had residence in Canada. And unfortunately, with the way things were going, they just felt that it was time to sort of move on. Well, he just sent me a message this week. The amazing thing is this, guys, his life was changed here. He said that the way people loved on him and he loved coming to church, he loved the way things were. And he said God really spoke to him. In fact, he got water baptized in our last baptism in, in, in August, was it? And um, he, he just said, he just wanted to say to the church, thank you, everybody, who showed him and her love. But here's the amazing thing. They've got a house to live in, to rent. And the woman who owns it has known them from before and she doesn't want to charge any rent for the first month. He just got a new job last week. And his wife has got a job. And he just said, Trev, things could not be going better. So I just thought, I wanted to read the thing that he sent to me, but I can't, I can't find it. I'll find it once the service is over. That's what usually happens. So we just wanted to celebrate that guy. He said, no matter where you are in the world, God's on the throne. God's in charge. Amen. So be encouraged that he's a good God. He's a great God. Amen. So this message today, I want to keep it laid back, but it's called Salvation Belongs to God. And guys, I want to say this from the outset that, you know, we're citizens of heaven for those who have put faith in Jesus, right? We get so much to be thankful for. I, I think that the days and the times we live in are great times. I know, I know there's on some, and I know that, that there's stuff happening that's not very nice with anything else, but you know what? We're meant to shine. And I really feel that this is a great time and a great hour for the church to rise up and reach out with the love of Jesus to those people around us and, and pray for them and trust God to draw them by a spirit. Because here's the thing, God loves them more than what we do. And God so loved the world that he gave everything. Amen. But what I want to say is this, guys, because sometimes we get so used to stuff and something goes wrong and we get down and everything else. Guys, listen, it doesn't finish here. And one day you're going to take your last breath, all of us. And I know some of you believe in the rapture. I believe in the rapture. I would love to go in the rapture. But I know a lot of friends, great people, men and women of God, who thought they would go in the rapture, and they're gone. But they lived their life for Jesus, and they made an imprint in people's lives. And I'm saying that's what we're called to do. You know what? See, church, it's not all about our comfort and stuff. It's not. You know what? You'll be challenged with us here, but each and every one of us is called to get beside people and share the good news of what Jesus done. Because I'm going to tell you, eternity is real. And the bottom line is, everybody, God made everybody, but not everybody's a child of God. Are you with me? And, and we've got a story to tell, his story, his story of his love for mankind, amen? And it says in Acts 4, 12, salvation is found through Jesus alone. In all the world, there is no one else who God has given who can be saved. Guys, the church can't save you. And I know it's sad. I, there's just some people, you've seen people getting water baptized today. There's people who are baptized in the denominations. Being baptized, being Christian doesn't get you to heaven. I want to talk about that today. It's great what they've done. It's an obedience to God. But that's not what gets you to heaven. That's not what cleanses you. It's your faith in Jesus Christ alone. So what I'm trying to say is the Pope won't get you to heaven. Trev won't get you to heaven. That's a, that's a fact. A denomination won't get you to heaven. A relationship with Jesus will. Are you with me? And I think this is really important because, because I, I, I've been to services. I'm not being rude. I don't want to mention denomination, but I've been to some places and when they've, when they've done somebody's service who's passed away, I haven't heard Jesus mentioned. And it's all like, uh, you know, you can be sad because when you love people when they pass away, if you don't have tears, there's something badly wrong. Is that right? Your heart breaks, but you celebrate when you know that it's not the end, guys. Death is only a doorway to being in the presence of God. And what's the presence of God? Like it says, there's fullness of joy in his presence. You know, when you get to heaven, you're going, wow. There's no sickness, there's no disease or anything else. You, are you with me? But the only way to there is through Jesus. There's no other way. And, and I'm going to say something else too, church, to tell you. We're living in days now, and, and it's going to get tougher. I'm not prophesying doom and gloom, but it's going to be tougher. I'm going to tell you something. You're going to be challenged in your faith. And what I want to say is this. 
Get in your word. Get into worshiping God. I'm not trying to be religious. Don't listen to Mr. Google. Because I'm telling you, people go to, I'm not being rude, go to university. It's great. Get your degrees. But a lot of people go to them places who've got faith and they leave them with no faith. Because some of these teachers, I'm not being rude, I love the people, but they teach them wrong stuff. I'm serious. I'm being real, real serious. Guys, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to God but by Jesus Christ. And that, that's our message. And you know what? If you believe in heaven and hell, you would, and you love people, you'll tell them the truth. Now, we, we do it not in a religious way. We don't, hey, bro, you know, you don't know Jesus, you're going to hell. We love on them. Let them see what's happening in our lives. Come on, guys, God's doing great stuff in our lives. God's transforming our lives. Some of you from being old rat bags, now you're lovely people. <laughs> but seriously, but they can see that. And love on them. And, and I tell you what, pray for them for stuff, and stuff happens. God moves. In their lives, amen. So, you with me? Okay. Mark 16, 16. Look at this. Whoever believes and is baptized will be. But whoever does not believe will be condemned. You see, guys, it's, it's, an important thing is the second part of the scripture says, whoever does not believe will be condemned. You see, I know some people who didn't get a chance to get water baptized, but they're in heaven. Come on. Come on. Roger. You led your neighbor to Jesus, the old guy. He didn't get a chance to get water baptized. He was crook. But he asked Jesus in his life, he's there. It says, you see what it says? It says, that, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. It's believing that gives you salvation. Now, baptism is important because you want to go on with your life with Jesus. Amen? But it's a believing. You got to believe before you get water baptized. I remember we used to do water baptisms down in Gizzi in the old, um, in the river. The cut, freezing cold. But you know, some people used to come sometimes and, and you just stop the public and they would watch what's happening. Some of them would seriously would ask, the presence of God was there. Oh, can I get water baptized too? We had to say, if you don't believe in Jesus, we can't. But why not? It looks good. I said, because you're only going to get wet. <laughs> seriously. But you see, supernaturally, there's something happening when these guys done the public stuff. To, seriously, go That's It's awesome, isn't it? Yeah. You know? So, um, so what I'm saying is, baptism does not get you saved. Neither does christening. Neither does child dedication. I believe that children, when they die, they go to heaven. That's what I believe. You know, and I don't want to go into teaching. I could teach on that. But I believe that. I believe in, but, but I believe we all come to a certain age where we can understand. Does that make sense? You with me? So what I'm trying to say is this, guys. When, when some of you parents bring your children up and you dedicate them to the Lord, what you're saying is, I'm going to love them, my child the way God wants me to love them. I'm not religious, but I'm going to let them see Jesus in my life. So you're bringing them up, loving on them, praying for them, everything else, providing, and you're praying and believing that one day, just like your little kids, one day they'll realize, wow, Jesus loves me. I want Jesus in my heart. Does that make sense? So what I'm saying is, I'm not trying to be rude. Please hear me. But where I come from, from back home at one time, children are um, christened, they called it. The parents mean really well, but I know for a fact that my mom and dad, but my two sisters got christened, that they believed it was them getting christened got them to heaven. That's dangerous. Dangerous because if you grew up believing that, you with me? If you grew up believing that and you never come to a place where you actually repent and put your faith in Jesus, you're going to miss the boat. Now, I honor parents for getting their children christened because I believe a lot of them who get their children christened are doing it with the right reason, but a lot of them have never been taught. It just became a ritual, a, a religious ritual. Oh, we better do that because we belong to that church. Guys, because I go to McDonald's doesn't make me a hamburger. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? I, seriously, come on, guys. It's those who believe are followers or they trust in Jesus, they follow his ways. You with me? But what I'm trying to say, it's not that Christian that gets you to heaven. It's when you believe in Jesus. Does that, does that make sense? You know, even the thief on, thief on the cross, he wasn't baptized. He said, he said he's on the cross. Jesus, you, you've done nothing wrong. You don't deserve to be here. I do. And so does that guy beside me because we're, we're murderers and we're, we're convicts. But you've done nothing wrong. Jesus, you don't deserve to be here. Please, will you remember me when you go into your kingdom? Jesus said, I'll do better than that, mate. You'll enter paradise with me. He wasn't baptized, but he got saved on the cross. 
And that's the same. We're seeing people getting saved on their deathbed and stuff. Praise God for his grace. But it's the salvation through believing in Jesus. Amen? You still with me? Whew. God created humans, but not all humans are children of God. You must be born again. You're born, first of all. I used to think, what does born again mean? I had this guy in work, lovely guy back home in Ireland, but he had a jacket, and he had the old King James writing on it. I had nothing wrong with King James. I, I love reading the King James Bible, so but he ye must be born again. I didn't even know what ye meant, <laughs> if you know what I mean. But I remember saying to him one day, what, what's that thing you've got on your jacket? What does it mean? He said, Trev, that means that you've got to give your heart to Jesus. Still didn't make a lot of sense to me. Does not, I? Because you're born, first of all, from your natural parents. But when you're the second birth, unless you be born again, you cannot see the kingdom off. Yeah, that's right. So that's it. When you receive Jesus in your heart, his spirit comes in, boom, the Holy Spirit comes in, and you become born again. You don't become born again by good works. You don't become born again by how much money you give to the church or how well you serve the church. Them things are good. Keep, keep doing it. But, but that doesn't save you. Are you with me? That does, it's believing in Jesus. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, yes, God created all. Because I've heard people, I've been to church services. I've been rude. <sighs> where there's been a service. And I know that the person didn't give her life to Jesus. And the, the pastor or whatever, they're saying, oh, now with the Lord now, we're all God's children. I thought, but we're not God's children. I'm going to show you now. I'm not, I'm not trying to be harsh. So just hear me in this one, please. Don't want you leaving here feeling bad. I need you to know if, you, if you've never made a commitment to Jesus that you need, he loves you. He cares. When he went on the cross and he took all that stuff, that was because of his love for you. He didn't come to condemn you. He came to through, believed in him, you would be saved. How awesome is that? He didn't come to condemn, to condemn the world. He came that they would believe in what he'd done. He was a righteous, pure man who'd done nothing wrong and took our sins upon himself. That's, that's who he is. So in Romans, we've got it up. In Romans 8, 15 and 16, it says, so here's how you become a child of God. Look what it says. The spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. See, guys, we don't need to live in fear. When you get saved, you can be free. God ain't give you a spirit of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind, right? But he's saying we received the spirit. Rather, the spirit you received brought you what? Brought about your what? Adoption, the sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself testifies with our spirit that we are what? Guys, you become God's children one way. Repent and ask Jesus in your life. Lord, I've messed it up. I've messed it up big time. And you know what? We don't deserve to be saved. It's his goodness. We all really deserve to be punished. If you want to break it down, we did. But his goodness, the goodness of God leads to Repentance. Is that right? <clears throat> a few years ago, 28 years ago, actually, 27, we hadn't been long saved. We went back home to Ireland and um, they were having a party around, it was New Year and we were getting ready to come back to New Zealand. They're having a party and obviously, guys, I'd shared my faith with my family. I didn't preach at them, but I, I shared mostly because they would ask me questions. And one of my sisters had asked me, Temple well, Trev, you know, how do you know you how, how do you get to heaven? I said, man, do you get to heaven you just, by repenting from a lifestyle, acknowledging I'm a sinner and believing that Jesus died for my sins and he rose from the dead and asking him into my heart. That's simple as that. Oh, but no, no, you must, you must have to do something. That's no, 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 that's it. That's, and you must be born again to get into heaven. So they're having the party that night, right? And she's having the conversation with my uncle and uh, something happened anyway and she, she said to him, now she wasn't saved, she said, no, uncle, you must be saved to get into heaven. Now, Somebody had, had heard what she said, so they looked straight at me, and they said, oh, Trevor, come on, we know that God loves everybody. We're all children of God. Your sister's not right there. And I had to look back at Auntie and say, she actually is right. I said, yes, you're right. God does love everybody, but we're not all children of God. And it's a fact. Oh, surely not. I said, look, I don't want to talk anymore about this because these guys were having a few. And it wouldn't have been a good time to, to talk. But she was genuine when she said, oh, God loves everybody. Like it was a real heart thing to her. She said, surely your sister's not right. She was, I said, she actually is right. I said, but you know what? Now is not the time to talk about it. If you want to talk about it more, I'm happy to call and have a coffee with you or a cup of tea in the next few days. 
Because unless you get saved, you, the bottom line is you're not a child of God. But here's the good news. The invitation to be part of God's family is universal. But there's one condition. You must have faith in Jesus Christ. Galatians 3.26 says, For all who, what does it say? For you are all children of God through what? See, that, that, that's not true just being born to your parents. This is, this, is, this is a good word. I think it's a good word. Um, it's true faith in Jesus Christ. And John 1, 12, Jesus said, as many as received, listen carefully, as many as received, give he the power for them to become sons and daughters of God, even those who believe in his name. You gotta believe. You gotta get born again. You know, and what I wanna say this news is this, guys, life in this earth is just a vapor. You know, poof. You know, you ever walking on the street and them, the people use them vape things now? What I'm trying to say, all of a sudden there's a big puff of something, the next minute it's gone. <laughs> Guys, I'm going to tell you something, that's our life. Our life goes very quick here. When you live for an eternity, or, you know, say, say, just say eternity was from here to Ireland, which is quite a bit. Your life on earth is only like a pinprick. And sometimes we get so worried about living here that everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. And what I'm trying to say, guys, is we're going to die one day. There's going to be a day. It says, I, I hope I go in a rapture. But there's a, a good chance there's going to be a day where, where I'll be in a box here. Well, I won't be. My soul will be. My spirit and my soul will be with Jesus. And I'm telling you now, you better have the best celebration ever. And not the celebration, praise God, we get rid of the old pastor. <laughs> but I want, you to, I want you to celebrate. See, I want you to celebrate what Jesus has done. Because this guy here wasn't a very nice guy until Jesus came into his life. And even now I've got my pimples and everything else for stuff. But it's, good, it's going to be celebration. But we are all going to pass away one day, guys. What we are. James talks about 414, life is like a favor. Watch this photograph. Did anybody see this? I think it was on Sun Live. Did you see this? You see that? Torigo. I think it was weddings. It was a car accident. Um, okay, so show me the next photo, please. You see, this is the people who were in that car that was upside down. That woman's a believer. Her name is Karen Daniel. Karen Daniel. And she put her post on Facebook. I asked if I could use the photographs. I got in touch with her. Can I use your photographs, please? Because she put this thing on Facebook. And here's what she said, right? You need to hear this. She wasn't trying to be judgmental. I thought it was great. She put this, if you die today, where would you be? The question I am asking is not to judge, but because I love you. We were involved in a car accident yesterday that our car is lying on its roof. We both are fine. I have a sore rib cage, but nothing broken. It made, me, it made me realize how fragile we are and to live for eternity, not for this life. So I'm asking again, where would you be if you died? I thought it was brilliant. I got really convicted. Didn't feel, I could feel convicted to think, wow, she's right. You know, don't get me wrong, guys, we are blessed. But, but we don't preach, uh, what is that? Uh, no, but we're, we're not into this big overhead, no overhead and stuff, but on kingdom, everything's all going to be cozy. Everything's not always cozy. All hell breaks us at times, but within that, we've got God to bring us through stuff. Does that make sense? But I thought it was brilliant what she put on. I thought, wow, it really made me think, you're on the button there, girl. That's good. And I'll get to why in a minute. Because you see, guys, but here's a good thing. As a believer, to be absent from the body is to be in the presence of the Lord. Instantly. What did Jesus say to the thief? Today you'll be with me in paradise. You see this thing about purgatory and floating in between? It's a lot of doodah. It's not true. I'm just letting you know now. It's not true. There's nowhere in the Bible that talks about you float in between stuff. You don't have to come to this church and stick all this money in to get somebody to heaven. They get to heaven if they know Jesus. Come on. Come on. There's no such thing as purgatory. But life and death are serious and we're all going to die one day. Are you with me? But Paul said himself, man, he says, I'm torn in between Philippians 1, 22, 24, somewhere around there. He said, man, I'm torn in between what to do. I, I, hung, I want to go to be with Jesus. But... There's something inside, and I know in my heart that God's got me here for your betterment. Because Paul was still teaching them. Are you with me? But he was saying it was much better to go to heaven. So to be absent from the body is to be in the presence of the Lord. 
So the very second you take your last breath, bang, you're in the presence of God, right? And there's a reason for this. It says in Psalm 116, 15, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of a saints. Fuda, please. Now some of you might need hankies. I'm cool with this. I'm not being rude. But there's some here if some need them. Everybody know who that is? Lovely Trish. Beautiful Trish. A saint who's now in the presence of Jesus. See the battle for six years with cancer. And unfortunately, and we were believing for healing. We prayed, anointed with oil. Different ones of us in this fellowship had prayed for, loved on her. But I want to tell you something. We got to know Trish through, Debbie had preached somewhere. And a woman liked her preaching. She told Trish about it. Trish got in touch with Debbie and said, could you come and pray for me? Debbie said, I'd love to come and pray for you. Can I bring my husband with me? She said, yes, please. So we both went, we prayed for her. We believed with her for healing. And about two months later, maybe a month later, she started coming to church. She couldn't believe. Now, I'm not lifting the church up, but let me tell you something. The church is beautiful. And the church is Jesus's. So when you have a go at the church, you have a go at his bride. I don't know about you, but you have a go at my bride, mate, I'll give you the five-fold ministry. <laughs> come on, come on, we love our brides. Come on, guys, you know what I'm saying, right? Come on. But, but what I want to say is that th this woman started to come along. She loved coming. She got her husband to come once. She said, you need to come and see what I really love doing. She couldn't believe it. She couldn't believe that the songs we would sing, how we'd worship God. She was really getting touched by God. And she made friendships with at least half a dozen people here. She, she just loved you to bits, right? Now, what I want to say is, guys, that Trish, her time was up. She got, she got water baptized in February. She got saved last September, guys. Mike Knott was here in September, October, maybe October. She gave her heart to Jesus when Pastor Mike preached. Right, she got saved. She got water baptized in February. Then that stuff hit. And she felt not to come because she was easy immune to some stuff. And, uh, and, we, and none of us really realized how unwell she was at the end because she hit it really well. Like in the last week, things just happened. And, and you know, but here's the thing, guys. I'm sad in one way because she's a beautiful woman, but you know what? I'm going to see her again. And the thing that I thought about this when I seen the woman, I thought, wow, thank God we shared Jesus with her. Thank God we didn't put it foot about and think, oh, yeah, God loves everybody, you'll be fine. She heard the message off, hey, you've got to turn from your lifestyle and ask Jesus into your life. She done that. She done that, guys. She got saved here. She got saved where some of you have written people's names on the, on, underneath the carpet. Jesus brought her. And the thing is, she felt loved. She felt loved. And now she's with the Lord. She's not struggling anymore. She's not sick anymore. She's free. But she was a beautiful woman. And when I went to her service, I think it was a Thursday, was it Thursday we went? You know, I, I look around, I'm not being rude, but I didn't see a lot of hope. I didn't see a lot of hope, I'm just being honest. But when I'm sitting there, I had to keep it around myself. Trev, celebrate. She's with me. She's with me because she put her faith in Jesus. <sighs> Finishing off. Psalm 116, 11 says, in your presence is fullness of joy. Because she put her trust in Jesus, she's now with him. And I'm gonna finish with this and hand over to Nathan. John 14, 6 says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. Now I know there's some people watching from around the world and stuff. Nathan, you can come up, it's cool. Um, and I just want you to realize that you will are watching TV or whatever it might be. Jesus loves you. But you've got to make a call. And, and, and you won't get the Father through just praying. You know, my mother said to me once before she asked Jesus in her heart, she said, Trev, I say the Lord's Prayer every night. I said, Mom, you can say the Lord's Prayer 5,000 times a day. It ain't going to get you to heaven. Oh, dear, she says, what do you do? I said, ask Jesus in your heart. But acknowledge as well that you're messed up. I love my mom. She, you know, she's messed up. We're all messed up and saying, I said, but if you ask Jesus in your heart, and you know what? A while later, I did have the privilege of praying that prayer with her at the table. I, I loved her all the time, but, but what I'm saying is that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. There's no other way. And, and the bottom line is, guys, we live for an eternity. 
we choose. We choose where we want to live. But you got to put your faith in Jesus. That's what these people had done today. That's why it was so good to celebrate, not just the baptism, but the fact is, hey, wow, we're family. We're going to be together one day, always. Amen. Bless you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Trevor. This whole morning has been about I have decided. And I don't think for a second that if you're here this morning for the first time, and you're feeling that conviction of the Holy Spirit that this is an accident that you're here. The world would tell you that if it feels right, then do it. But I'm here to tell you this morning that the fact that God loves you, the fact, as we've heard this morning, the Scripture says there is no one but Jesus Christ that can save you, is what you need to anchor yourself to. And then in faith, make a decision this morning to step out and say, I've had enough. I've had enough of allowing my feelings to govern my decisions. From this morning onwards, I am a child of God who operates in faith. And I can tell you for a fact that when you make the decision that way, your emotions, your feelings, they will catch up with you and they will align themselves with the fact that God loves you and the decision of your faith this morning to follow Jesus Christ. I, honestly, I cannot add anything else to what Pastor Trevor shared this morning. He laid it out for us. He outlined what is required. So I'm not going to hang around and, and drag this out any longer. But I believe there are people here this morning that either need to come back to Christ or make that decision for the first time. Establish that line in the sand and say, from now on, Father, I am your son. I am your daughter. I am going to hang on to the fact of salvation. I'm going to step out in faith. I am no longer going to be governed by my feelings. So as every head is bowed, every eye is closed this morning, if you're feeling that heartbeat race, if you felt that those words were specifically for you this morning, that is God saying, now is your time, son and daughter. Choose me. So right now in this moment, I would just ask if that is your decision, have the courage of the Holy Spirit conviction to lift your hand and say, I have decided. Thank you. Is there any other hands in this place this morning? Online this morning, I know we've got an option. Thank you upstairs. Online this morning, there's an option. The Holy Spirit is not bound by these four walls. If you're watching in the sound of my voice this morning, God is speaking to you. Thank you, Father. We've had two hands here. This morning, we're going to say a prayer and then we're going to thank God with everything that we've got. Amen. Close your eyes and let's pray. If you raise your hand this morning, I really do want you to come up the front afterwards. We want to connect with you. But right now, we're just going to say a very simple prayer. Heavenly Father, I believe that you died and rose again for me. I receive you this morning into my life as my Lord and Savior. Come into my heart. Make me your son and daughter. Lord, I give you everything that I am and receive you as my heavenly Father this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay, let's give the Lord a praise offering. Whoa. We have family that have come back this morning. Praise you, Lord. Look, and just in closing, I just want to mention one thing our tithes and offerings. We thank you so much for your generosity, for your heart to give back to the Lord. There are options on the screen to sow into the house. You know, we had two salvations this morning in the house. That's only possible because you're faithful. So I encourage you, if you haven't started, get involved in investing in the kingdom of God, amen.
Thank you very much. Have we got a song? Yeah, we're going to finish with God's so Love. Wow, okay. <laughs> All right, we're going to finish with a song this morning. Cool, why don't we stand while the rest of the team comes up? Yeah. <laughs>